these two shloka in the Rajaguya Yoga actually exemplifies the word Guya. Guya has a connotation of mysticism around it. Now, what is a mystic thing or a gudha? Anything that is beyond the understanding of human intellect, we call it mystic. You don't understand it. You try your level best, but you are not able to fathom exactly how it is possible that such a thing can exist. The reason why mysticism comes into the scriptural knowledge is till the time one develops an intellectual ability to comprehend a thing, a thing remains mystical to him. Now, if supposing a villager is called and, and we talk to him that there is something called black hole, barely few meters in diameter, but contains substances that could easily spread over light years of diameter. Humongously dense, yet not seen, even the light cannot escape such a black hole is existing and many of them are existing in the cosmos or in the universe. This, if it is told to a farmer from a village, what he would say, that's very mystical. Either he would say, I don't believe in it or he says, I would believe in it, but it is beyond my understanding. It is mystical. It is something which I cannot comprehend. The ability of human intellect ends or falls short in comprehending the reality, that is when it becomes mystical. That being the situation, Bhagavan is trying to say in Raja Guiha amongst the mystic of the best mystical things in this world. There are many mystical things in this world. Is the galaxy widening or shortening? Why billions and billions and billions of stars are floating in this earth? Why sodium vapor is so much in concentration or methane gas is so much in concentration on Jupiter or Saturn? What is the need of creating a Pluto? What is the need of creating another galaxy? Why galaxies are colliding with each other with enormous release of energy? Why every few seconds there is a sun quake on sun releasing humongous amount of helium outside through the fusion reaction? We have no answer. Why? We don't know. Yes, it happens we know. Why? We don't know. Who, who does it? Who is behind all this? We don't know. Even these mystical questions are insignificant if we compare that with the ultimate mystical question, the ultimate mystical question is the world exists or does not exist. Now, to a common man, this is utterly stupid question. How can you deny my existence? I am right now speaking to you. Everybody is listening. And you say, you are not speaking. They are not listening. It is all fictional. Are we in a dream where we think dream is reality? This requires stretching of imagination. We are into a tough terrain of Bhagavad Gita. The beauty of this particular scripture is it makes things very simple in few shlokas, but in few shlokas it dives so deep that it literally paralyzes the mind. These two shlokas are of that type. Gurudeva has hinted in both the shlokas narration. In his commentary, he has explained that it is 
difficult for a human intellect to understand. He is enjoying two slokas. He is enjoying because he has been to that depth. So he, he knows how people are falling short. It's like an elderly man looking at the children of one year, two year age trying to pull a rope. Their capacity to pull the rope is not strong. They're small. Their intellect, our intellect is small. We can't be, you know, going to or fathoming those depths. The subject is Gambhir. It has got a depth of ocean. Does the world exist or not? If not, then what is happening? Are we dream characters? Why am I feeling it so real? Yesterday, I hit my leg to something and it pained me. It is unreal. My brother cheated me. Is it unreal? I ate the food just now for the breakfast. Unreal? The food is unreal. The eating is unreal. The eater is unreal. And if it is real, then somebody must have produced it. How can the world come in existence? Nothing comes in existence on its own. There has to be a cause for it, for sure. For sure, every karya has to have a current. So every karya has to have a current and world is a karya. So what is the current? In other words, who created the world? The question is completely put upside down. Why are you asking who created the world when the world itself is not created? Now that is something called blasting the fundamental. I am saying I am thirsty, give me the water and the person is answering, oh, there is no thirst in this world. How paradoxical it is. How weird it is. And the question is equally paradoxical. Does world exist? It doesn't or it doesn't. If it exists, then who is the creator? If it doesn't exist, then where are we? Are we in non-existential thing? Is it Sat, true or is it Asat? Not true. Sat or asat. World exists or doesn't exist. The answer is after the deliberation of all the darshanas, of all the sautantrikas, the buddhas, the vidyanavadis, the mahasangikas, the nayaikas, the vaisheshikas, the yogis, the sankhyas, the purvamimasakas, all of them have actually torn their hairs and split their hairs on this particular subject. Some say it is there, it is true. Some say it does exist. Don't tell me it is existing. It is Lord's world. Lord has created this world. Our interpretation of it has been bad. Otherwise, world is very good. So that means there are two types of world. World as designed by the Lord, which is beautiful, nice, everything nice and good about it. And the world that is perverted by our intellect, which is bad world. So there is a bad world. There is a Lord's good world and the Lord according to some. According to some... This world is nothing but Lord Shakti itself. And Shakti and Lord cannot be separated. So the world and Lord cannot be separated. So the world is Lord. Now we are talking about Vishishta Advaita Ramanujachari. I am also Lord's body. This tree is Lord's body. The mountain is Lord's body. This is all Lord's thing. We have mis apprehended the reality. That is why we are suffering. Just correct your eyesight and be where you are because you are a part of creation. Creation is only by Lord. Lord and creation are not two separate. They are one and the same. Creation is Lord's body. 
and you are those small cells in the body so remain happily serving the lord ramanujacharya but the advaiti or the kevala advaiti he says there is no creation at all it appears that something is created which you call yourself world in fact you yourself are nothing else but an appearance now that is something very hard to digest very recently i bought a car for myself and now you say car the money and myself and the purchase everything is unreal i am not going to accept it because i experienced it and the counter to that is yes the experience or experiencing anything itself is falsity is a sat in fact whenever you experience anything it is bound to be false because lokate bhunjate iti lokaha you are in the lok experiential world when you experience you are in the false world when you do not experience you are into the real not world in real that is reality not experiencing is the condition of being in reality when will you not experience when you are not into the experiential world when will you not be in the experiential world when you are able to extricate yourself out of the experiential world and when you go out of the experiential world does the world exist questions and questions and questions these two shlokas are meant for that only in other parts of gita bhagwan says you don't think you are the doer of the karma let the doer of the karma die and the karma happen when the doer of the karma dies when the karta bhranti is gone kartrutva bhranti is gone when the doership is gone who is there in this world is the doer in this world and if he is not in this world where is he swami ji took so many gana gana vyajna uh, these that uh, nothing from swami ji standpoint he was not a doer at all when he was not a doer where was swami ji then no but uh, we saw that he actually flew from the point a to point b from delhi to maybe chennai or somewhere he flew what flew swami ji's body flew from one point to another point what about swami ji when the doership is absent when kartrutva bhranti is not there you are not in the world when you are not in the world can world be there think point to ponder i am not there in america right that means for the time being america is not existing for me because i am in some other place similarly i am not in the world that means world is absent for me when world is absent for me that means the existence of world is over for me now when gurudev would look and if we say gurudev ke okay, gurudev the gyan yajna was very good you spoke so nicely about bhagavad gita what he must be doing in the mind he must be having a hard hearty or a mighty laugh why chinmaya is also a myth teaching is also a myth people like the teaching is also a myth because from his standpoint from reality standpoint not thing has happened is happening or will happen
if nothing has happened if the world has not been produced at all there is no creation at all then where are we how can we the part of creation and that is the reason why there is a mystic smile on the face of lord sri krishna sri krishna's smile is the most difficult thing in the world to understand why because through that smile he is asking this question arjuna nothing is created in that nothing created world you think mahabharata war is happening in that non created universe the non created mahabharata was war i am standing in front of you if there is no creation then how the almighty can be present in mahabharata aren't you surprised with this contradictory statements now reconciliation of these contradictory contradictory statements arjuna is my power aishwarya yoga is power aishwarya is divine this is my divine power sat asat vilakshan this is called sata asat vilakshan khyati of shankara acharya world is existing world is not existing world is existing non existing both how can both be there either you are there or you are not there no you are there and you are not there can you imagine water is there water is not there show me a place where water is there and water is not there you cannot but in case of world world is there world is not there vilakshan how can existence be there existence not there non existence and existence at same time at same place how it is possible arjuna that is aishwarya yoga that is my divine power now now i know you are enough confused and puzzled about the whole thing let me start telling you so that you perhaps can solve this riddle and if you solve this riddle arjuna everything is done what will happen then when you reach me the riddle doesn't remain the riddle when you have not reached me everything is mystical and riddle impossible to reconcile sadho ye jag bavrana sachi kaho to maran lage jhuti kahe batiyana kabir mara says this world is such a stupid thing if i tell them the real thing they beat me and if i tell them the false thing they believe me and lord is also almost apparently lying to us because in the last shloka what did what did the lord say matstani sarva bhutani he only said all the beings are at my place and right now he said nacha matstani bhutani what is this double talk of lord krishna matstani sarva bhutani all the beings are in me very next shloka in the same breath na मत स्थानी भूतानी भूतास दिस ऑल दिस क्रिएशंस आर नॉट इन मी व्हिच वन टू बिलीव इज इट दैट द ऑल थिंग्स दैट आर क्रिएटेड आर इन लॉर्ड कृष्णा और दे आर नॉट इन लॉर्ड कृष्णा व्हाट टू बिलीव एंड बिफोर वी कुड सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम अनदर बॉम्ब हैज बीन ड्रॉप and what is the problem the world is not created only if world is not created where is the question of who is dependent on whom who is independent and who is world is not there and for sure people like gaudapada paratpar guru of shankara acharya confidently through gaudapada karika says world is not there even samarth ramdas said अगाजे घडले ची नाही त्याची वार्ता पुसशी काही वाय आर यू आस्किंग मी अ क्वेश्चन अबाउट समथिंग विच हॅज नॉट नेवर हॅपन्ड दिस इज वॉट ही हॅज सेड समर्थ रामदास अबाउट द वर्ल्ड इफ देर इज इनफ कन्फ्युजन नाव विथ एव्हरी वन ऑफ अस 
regarding what is the reality is the world existing or not existing how can it exist and non exist at the same time does the lord exist in all the things or he doesn't if it is not created then where is the question of lord existing into everything if these questions have come then the shloka correctly starts saying that arjuna pashyame yogam aishwaryam if you are able to transcend your human intellect then you can pashya me mind yogam aishwaryam this divine power of mind you can assess or fathom or understand or comprehend provided you have transcended the human understanding and then if you transcend and come to me and see the world from reality standpoint when krishna is looking at the world na cha mat sthani bhutani when arjuna is seeing and asking shri krishna then the answer changes mat sthani sarva bhutani so it depends on the standpoint who is standing where from krishna's standpoint is what this shloka is na cha mat sthani bhutani because nothing has been created from the standpoint of reality bhutani are nothing else but the adhyasa or superimposition and superimposition has no role so when you are a rope you can say the snake is not existing but if you are outside then snake is existing and it is existing because of the rope because the snake is existing when you are looking it from a distance when you are looking at the rope from a distance then the snake will exist so when you are in the world the world will exist and it will then be dependent upon mai adhyakshene suyate chara charam lord krishna but when you look from the rope standpoint rope will say i am rope where is the question of snake lord krishna standpoint i am the only one what are you talking about something called plurality and this and this. how can finite come from infinite gurudev rightly said from infinite standpoint finite cannot exist from finite standpoint finite is existing because of infinite that is the crux of the thing and the same is explained in the second line bruta brun bruta bruta bhut 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 means sustainer of all beings bhut bhut na cha bhutastha mama atma bhut bhavana bhut bhut is sustainer sustainer means what upadana karana if you think from the world standpoint that the world is existing then i am the material cause sustainer bhuta bhrutta also mama atma myself bhuta bhavana i am the originator of the creation so i am nimitta karana so bhuta bhavana is pointing towards efficient cause or nimitta karana bhuta bhrutta pointing towards material cause or upadana karana sustainer i am the creator nimitta karana i am the sustainer upadana karana so if you think the world is real then i am the upadana and nimitta karana if you think the pot is real then i am the clay but if the pot itself is not existing then i am not the clay because there is no need of clay so it all depends on from which side one is really looking at that is why arjuna has been told to come to krishna's side to have a look pash that means transcend your human understanding don't be a human being be krishna and then see the world then the thing will be na cha mat sthani bhutani then there is no ghost you become the post and then there is no ghost you become the rope then there is no snake 
so from rope standpoint from the post standpoint from lord krishna standpoint there is no world in pure awareness in its infinite nature of sheer knowledge gurudev says there never was there never is there can never be any world of pluralistic embodiment pluralistic world which is but a creature of misunderstanding born out of forgetfulness of infinite avidya so this is called anirvachniya khyati the masterpiece of the explanation has come at the end of the shloka commentary by gurudeva and it's very difficult to understand around 10 to 15 types reading is required of these four lines to understand what gurudev is trying to say the dreamer can function only in the waker because the waker pervades the dream experiences and at the same time the waker is not in the dream nor in fact when awakened fully does the dream ever exist in the waker the masterpiece of english language and the masterpiece of the philosophy also in the dream there has to be somebody who is dreaming otherwise dream has no meaning only dream has no meaning somebody is dreaming then the dream becomes a dream somebody has to witness the dream so the witness to the dream is not in the dream yet the dream cannot happen without the witness and when the witness becomes alone in awakened state the dream doesn't exist at all similarly world is a dream existing because of this the the one who is witnessing it that is lord so when dream is there it is getting witness because of the lord but when dream is over dream itself is gone because then there is no nobody witnessing the dream only lord remains but how this is contactless contact how it is possible the contactless contact has been explained in the next shloka yad akash yatha akash sthito nityam vayu sarvatra go mahan as the mighty wind again gurudev has used the beautiful english here the wind curls swirls and whirls around everywhere in the space they can move and exist only in the space the space supports and envelops them from everywhere yet they do not ever at all limit the space the world has been given a room to play the magic do falls on the theater the stage is provided by the reality the drama is played because of the stage the stage is provided by the reality the akasha and everything is happening on it this substratum tatha sarvani bhutani matstani iti upadharaya please upadharaya means understand after deliberation is called upadharaya arjuna think upadharaya means mananam nididhyasanam chintanam do this use vichara and then you will realize sarvani bhutani matsthani upadharaya sakala hans me rame biraje ram bina koi dhame nahi sab brahmand me jyot ka vasa rame bina koi dhame nahi this realization will come only after understanding the concept of contactless contact all the fruits are only containing a juice that gives the ultimate satisfaction rest everything is the pericarp the seed the branch the tree and all the, the essence of the fruit lies in the rasa essence of the world lies in the anand sat and chit which is there in that raso vai swaha saha raso vai saha that is how arjuna if you understand it in this manner then what will happen then you will realize me so existence of the world whether it exists or not 
depends on who is looking from where arjuna when i look at the world i don't even consider that it is existing because i am the rope for me the snake doesn't exist for those who are away from the rope they do see the snake first and try to do something to get away from the snake so that they can reach the rope that is called sadhana are you Are you? I, I can ask one question. Is there time there? One minute. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, Anjali, uh, this uh, word uh, Aishwaram and Aishwaryam. Uh, what is the difference? Aishwaryam. Aishwaram is actually the root is Aishwaryam. Aishwaram is the one who is holding the Aishwarya. So it is a kind of a sama. So so Aishwaram will become divine. Aishwaram, Aishwaram is Ishwarasya of the God becomes Aishwaram. So Aishwaram is divine. Aishwaryam is the adjective of the Ishwara. Aishwaram is. of the ishwara so this is as good as ishwarasya so it becomes divine that is why it is called divine even madhusudan maharaj Mad saraswati maharaj has taken aishwaryam yogam as divine power the yoga here by lakshanartha is power or shakti so divine power or divine shakti that is the meaning of ishwaram hari om ah hari om so aishwaram means of ishwara Okay. Of Ishwaryam is the noun. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.